Well, Scott, I'm absolutely delighted to be chatting with yourself. Actor, teacher, educator, producer, myself and Steve Evans here. Well, hello to you both. Yeah, you've done your homework, I see, Terry. So, yeah, yeah. A little bit. Right, hi, Scott. Yeah, um, so you're in Glasgow today. I presume you're not on tour at the moment. You're all right. Not, not at the moment. We go on tour at the end of this, uh, the end of uh, April. It kind of all kicks off and we're... Uh, we're coming down south. We're coming down to the big smoke in London um, with the show. That's the, the first time the show have been in London, so that's quite exciting for the for the show as well. Brilliant stuff. We'll we'll, we'll come on to that in a sec. Um, but before we talk about you know your work as an actor and, and, and a writer, what do you do for hobbies uh, off stage and uh, in your spare time if you have any? <laughs> uh, well, you know, you're both from Liverpool, so I, I take a wee stab in the dark. These are maybe big football fans, so uh, <laughs> yep. I, I'm the same same myself up here. Um, uh, I, I like playing football probably even more than watching it. I enjoy kicking a ball about, but um, uh, I'm now 40. I played in a, a charity match two weeks ago. I ended up with a sore back. I played the 90 oh. minutes. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I think sometimes when people th find out the actors are coming along, they don't suspect for a minute you've played football your whole life. So yeah. they get a nice, pleasant surprise. But it was the legends. It was kind of uh, the Rangers kind of legends versus the Celtic legends. So that everybody can play. So they're all very good. So uh, I finished the, the 90 minutes and I had a bit of a sore back. So that's I'm doing a wee bit of healing at the moment with my, with my back. But uh, I enjoy playing the football and enjoy watching it as well. Excellent. A lot of talent on that pitch then. Yeah. yeah. yeah isn't it hard? <laughs> and then they've still got it. They've still got it. I can assure you they've Sorry. still got it. <clears throat> yeah. There was one over the weekend. There was a, the Liverpool Legends playing the um, it was Ajax oh, yeah. Legends with um, yeah. <clears throat> what's his name, the England manager, Sven, Sven, yeah, yeah, Sven, Sven. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Torres scored, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He did. Eventually, it was, good, it was a good game. Actually, it was an entertaining game. Yeah, yeah. 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 He's put on a lot of weight, Torres. So he looks um. So I don't commentate the set. He looks like a bodybuilder, like a bouncer. Yeah, he was. He was doing that for a while. Yeah, he was kind of. I think he was competing for a while. I think it was through, through his time and his energy into something else. I think it's really hard for the football players when they finish. Yeah, yeah. You know, do all, all that dedication, all that time for all those years. Then they've got a big blank but a, a diary to look at and go, what do I do? And I think it's hard yeah. for them to go and watch the football. You know, I think they, they always want to be playing, you know. Um, Absolutely. So, so, yeah. To move on, uh, Scott, you're probably best known for Ross in six episodes of the television series Outlander. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering... Has the audition changed for this post-COVID? How, how did you get the part for Outlander? And moving on to the second question, or second part, has it changed? Um, it, it, all auditions have kind of changed um, because of COVID. Um, it's meant it's meant kind of uh, online. And there was a kind of big thing recently in the news about uh, actors submitting tapes and them maybe not being seen. Yeah. Um, so there's a kind of big kind of kick up in the news about that. So obviously during lockdown, nobody could go anywhere. So, so we kind of got into the... the the habit of doing, you know, kind of self tape to camera. You send it in. Uh, the agent would then send it on, and the and the the the, the kind of casting directors would watch it. Well, back when I got into Outlander, um, we were still meeting in person. Mm. So I I went down to London for my first audition. Um, an audition uh, for a part of Angus, which actually went to a Liverpudlian actor, Stephen Walters. Oh. <laughs> so you're familiar with Stephen. Oh, yeah. Stephen, yeah. Stephen got the the role of Angus, and he's brilliant. Uh, later on, kind of down the line, I got audition for Ross, and that was in person as well. That one was in Edinburgh, and I was doing the Edinburgh Festival. I was doing a, a theatre show at the Edinburgh Festival, so nip, nipped in between shows along a, a flat in Edinburgh. I did a, a self tape to, ca to, to a casting director, and I managed to get the to get the role. So, uh, so yeah, and then went on to to be an Outlander. And as you say, there it's certainly what I'm most known for. I mean, my, my Twitter social media kind of exploded to over half a million. Yeah. I've been on that American TV show, which is just insane. Um, and uh, and it wasn't even the biggest role that I've done of all the different things I've done. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I've done I've done uh, Kajaki, the, the British war movie. I've done Angel yeah. Share, yeah. which in the UK are probably, uh, you know, kind of um, really, really good credits. Yeah. But Outlander, just with the sheer audience that, that, that you know, it's, it's exposed to in terms of the American market, it's, okay. uh, it's uh, a big one. I can imagine. We spoke to another actor, and he suggested that um, perhaps an inexperienced actor has an advantage with the tape, because they can do, like, 10 cuts of it. You know, they don't yeah. like it, edit it, do it again. Whereas the experienced actor, you know, seeing people in real life, they get one chance maybe at it. 
Yeah, well, there's a, the other thing as well. I try and chat to when I'm. You mentioned about teaching when I'm when I'm yeah. teaching the kids. I do try to kind of say to them about the the kind of first impression is one thing, but also, um, what else have you got going on in your life? Because MD, you meet in a casting, uh, know that you're going to be on set for long days, yeah. and uh, and if the only thing you've got to chat about is your CV, then that's not going to cut it on a on a movie set for twelve hours a day for week upon week upon week. It's yeah. just you chatting about jobs you did get or jobs you should have got or things you were in to see or things you weren't seen. So there's a wee bit I think of of uh, of having a bit more to you than just doing acting. Do you know what I mean? Is it, if you well, we, we were in Jordan for six weeks, we Oscar winners. Do you know what I mean? You're sitting in five star hotels. They don't want to chat about what you were up, up for last week or the wee <laughs> job you had the time before it. You know, got a wee bit more to it. So I think yeah. that's that's important, and you get that when you go into the room. Whereas, as you say, on the tape, uh, you know, you can sit there all night and do fifty mm. tapes yeah. till you get it perfect. And I, I tend to don't. I tend to do four maximum. I think you know, kind of. Um, you wouldn't. Be, I always say to people, you wouldn't be getting asked to do the tape if you couldn't do the job. True. You know, yeah, the casting true. directors. That, that's their job. Their job is to have a you know, kind of a, a list of folk that they know could do the job, and it's are you a good fit for it? And I try and trust that the right roles find the right people. So, like, say, I was saying, yeah, Stephen Walker's got the role of Angus, mm. and no point was I sitting there watching the show thinking that could have or should have been me. Do you know what I mean? You just, you've got to trust that the right the right role found the right person, and the right actor, and, and your time will come too. And I think that's. It's quite a good philosophy for moving forward because otherwise you do meet a lot of people on the road. I've met people before and I went, you got a job that I should have got. And I'm like, I don't think that's a good look. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, on your website and uh, your Wikipedia page and IMDB page, you're credited as being an actor, a producer, a teacher and a writer. So which of these titles suits you best? Which is more you? I don't even know. I, I'm not a big fan of labels, right? That's that's the honest truth as well. Um, I I, I enjoy I, I enjoy different things, and I get just as much enjoyment from standing at the back of a theatre watching somebody else on the stage, knowing that I've played my part in the produ producing side of it as I do being on it. You know, kind of in terms of the writing side, you've know, uh, been involved in uh, a couple of projects writing wise. It's not certainly not. I'm not a wordsmith in terms. Of that's not my gift. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm a better football player than I am a writer, um, but uh, but but I'm uh, I'm happy I'm happy to give something a go. So I, I think that's it. It's like I, I probably wouldn't put any particular label, but if, if on the right project, and I, I always chat to the, the younger actors coming through. You get different types of actors, right? I, I, and I, I mean this in the nicest way possible. You get actors who, what's the money? Is the first question, oh, yeah. right? So uh, they don't care if it's the new James Bond or it's the best part in the world. <laughs> What's the money on it? Or they're not interested yeah. in reading it. Yeah. And you get other actors that they're not interested in the money because even if it's the best money in the world, if it's not a good part and not a no good story, they don't want to be involved. Mm. And uh, and I kind of like to think of myself in the second camp that uh, I, I, I like if, if I can be involved in a project in any way, shape or form that I think I can bring something to the table, I'm keen to be involved. And that's why I think there's been different roles there that I've been involved in is because the project's probably been right and it's been a different role that better suited me. You know, sometimes you've got to be a spear carrier. You can't always be the leading man. You know, yeah. sometimes you're a spear carrier. And I think those roles are good because if, you, if you're a spear carrier in something, you appreciate when you're the lead in the other thing and all the other guys have been the spear carriers to make you look good as well. So mm -hmm. I think it's a good kind of balance and you appreciate things like writing and producing, uh, understanding how to juggle a whole project. You know, there's... A lot more to worry about on Outlander than just my lines. Do you know what I mean? The filmmakers have been storyboarding and searching locations and casting yeah. and getting costumes and doing a lot more than just worrying about my lines when I go on set. So it be quite humbling having that experience, I think. Excellent. Yeah. That's an yeah, excellent philosophy. Sense. It does, yeah. 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 Scott, again, on your website, scottkyle.co.uk, um, it's sorry. There's a brilliant animation. I think you sent me and Steve a link as well when we sort of followed you on Twitter. An animation that illustrates yeah. an extract from your book. It's not where you start. Mm -hmm. Is this about? Is this book? Is it about? Is this a fact-based memoir? Um, and based on the the stage show singing, I'm Noah Billy. He's a Tim. Is there a link between the two of them? Uh, well, yeah. So basically, um, I. I... As I said earlier on about storytelling, right? I yeah. believe everybody's a storyteller. I believe there's a book in everybody. 
Um, and I believe we've all got a talent to tell. But some people can tell multiple stories. Some people can maybe tell, you know, like maybe guys from Liverpool can tell a story about growing up in Liverpool better than anybody else in the world, right? And there might be other actors that can could tell a story about growing up anywhere in the world just because they're great storytellers. Yeah. Um, well, well, I wanted to put my story down. Um, and, uh, and and initially it was kind of, it was like the life story of, of when I grew up, I, I, I grew up, I was... Uh, from a broken home and I was in foster care for a, a, a small period of time and uh, my kind of journey through um, education, employment, back to education and then into the entertainment industry. I kind of wanted to try and document that and also put a wee bit of a, a bit about the, the success I've had in the entertainment industry coming from the background I've had. I thought it'd be nice if somebody, if somebody picked up my book in the library and inspired somebody, yeah. it's worth telling the story. So the, the opening chapter of the book is uh, is the animation that you've watched and essentially it tells the story of uh, when I graduated uh, college at the age of 21, I went to my local library and I picked up a play and that play was singing I'm not a Billy, he's a Tim. So it's about two yeah. football fans. If, if you want to imagine, imagine it was Liverpool and Everton. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The two guys are sharing a prison cell. Well, we'll obviously oh, have to oh. say <laughs> After a few beers, uh, after the game. It's, uh, <laughs> it's Rangers and Celtic in our version of it. Uh, but it is universal and uh, and I put, put the play on at a couple of local venues. And long story short, over the course of five years, it grossed over a million pounds for wow. the box office. And wow. it allowed me it allowed me to pay off my mum's mortgage and the debts that she had incurred for bringing up us as a single parent. I managed to clear her debts and kind of uh, pave the way for a new life for her and a, a new life for myself. Uh, the the night that the kind of play that 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 chapter features on is the night that the writer decided to take the rights to the play off me. Um, so as a what? young man, uh, I, I I'd acquired the rights to the show, yeah. but I wasn't a businessman at this stage because I was just a young kid went to drama school and. Uh, and put on a play. Um, obviously, the show became very, very successful, i.e. it was worth a lot of money, yeah. and I didn't have the rights, the long-term rights for the show tied up. I didn't have a lawyer or anybody who advised me to to tie down the rights to the show, so the the, the writer came along to, to a venue in Glasgow. There was 3,000 people coming to see it that night, yeah. uh, including my, my family who I hadn't met. So my dad disappeared when I was younger, and he went away and had another family, so I had three sisters and a brother. Wow. All coming to see the show this night in Glasgow, and that was the night after the show. Just to the stand innovation, and the writer uh, took the time to tell me that was my business gone. And that was he was taking he was taking the show off me and going to do it himself. So I lost my business that night, and that's the opening chapter of the book. And it's called it's, it's not where you start. It's the is the book, and that's about going into acting and not knowing anything about it, you know, and and going on to have the the level of success, you know, kind of it, it's it's success to me in terms of I never thought I'd be doing movies or TV shows or theatre shows, so I'm I'm delighted with with my career to date. You know, the other people have better careers than me, but that's 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 fine. Um, but yeah, the the, the book, the chapter that I'm chatting about, the now is called "It's Not Show Friends, yeah. It's Show Business," yeah. Yeah. and that yeah. was the bit of the business that I didn't quite uh, understand. I should have had. I should have got contracts in place. I should have had yeah. lawyers and stuff look over things and maybe. Um, but you know yourself in life. You're know, um, probably experienced in life. You, you don't know until joining the back the yeah, dots yeah. look backwards that that was the right thing to do because I I'd never done anything else. I had a huge success on my hands. The first project I I, I laid my hands on, and I probably wouldn't have done Outlander or, or done Kajaki or done Angel Share or anything else. So uh, and and what happened was last year. The writer contacted me and said, "Would I want to take it back for the twenty-year anniversary?" So that was a big, uh, a big, big decision for me and my wife. There was a lot of pain and heartache and trauma from it the first time round. So, um, so we went and got the the lawyers involved and got the rights to the show, and, and we're going to do it again. So, so yeah, but um, so that's that's that's, that's the story anniversary. and a half, that isn't it? Just a bit, that's yeah. It's it's a real break that, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but again, what you're hoping there is that there's a uh, there's a lesson in it. I think every every chapter yeah. in the book's got a lesson in it of some sort. Yeah. And that one, it was painful at the time looking back. I mean, we were, we were we're almost finished the book, and then I got the chance to get the playback, and there was a real dilemma of going, how do I end the book? Because you know yeah. we've had some some real highs, you know, until we've been to, invited to the Baftas, Kajaki, we you know was up for Baftas and stuff. We've met the Queen at the Queen's Garden Party, hmm. you know, kind of we've we've had some amazing highs, and then with the lows of the pandemic, and I'm going, do you finish it at the pandemic when all the work's dried up? You know, kind of. Yeah. Um, and then getting the getting the play back seemed to make sense that that would be the end of the book because that's a nice bookend that's full circle, you know, finding the play, building the play, losing the play, and then almost you know two decades later getting the play back. Brilliant. It's a kind of nice bookend. 
Well, where can people get hold of the book, Scott? Where, where is it available? It, 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 we, we haven't finished it yet. So what I did was I released the first chapter on the animation yeah. because we're doing the tour. Right. And I thought, All well, right. yeah, well, yeah. And obviously the, the, the end of the book's going to be probably when the tour's done, probably, you know, the success right. of the tour, yeah, whatever yeah. level that Happy be. ending. Yeah, wherever the tour takes us to, hopefully we get to. I'd love to go to Australia and America and Canada with this show, but we'll see. At the moment, we're uh, we're coming down your way. We're coming to Liverpool. We're coming to London. Um, we're doing kind of a Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland. So we're we're getting around the UK. Um, but maybe we'll get further afield one day. Hopefully, I'm looking forward to coming and watching. <laughs> yeah, I spotted the uh, the one in Liverpool on the on the venues. Yeah, brilliant. Um, yeah, the Olympia we, Theatre in Liverpool. I, I came down there last year to do Train Spotting 2. I was playing Renton in Train Spotting 2, and that's when I, <laughs> I got to play the, the Olympia. It's a beautiful theatre. Yeah, yeah. So we were programming the tour, and I thought I'm definitely going to go back to, to Liverpool with the show. Excellent. Excellent, yeah. So while we're talking stage shows and uh, you're going to all over the UK, uh, tell us a little bit about it. Does this production change according to where you are? Or is it the same everywhere? I know you've said it's a generic story, pretty much. Yeah. But you know, sometimes you have to you have to think about culture and where people yeah, are from, well, and that. There's uh, there's 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 local references that get changed wherever we go. Yeah, yeah. That normally get a wee cheer here or there. Um, and uh, and like there's a there's a big football match on the sixth of April up here. Uh, it's Rangers versus Celtic at Ibrox Park. <laughs> so obviously the cast, there's a cast. We watch that uh, very closely and scrutinise everything that happens in it because that will all be in the. That'll all be in the show. You know, of if course, there's any drama, yeah. I don't I don't even remember there was one with Ali McCoy and Neil Lennon had a Barney uh, at the side of the pitch. <laughs> yeah. That sort of thing goes in the show instantly. You know, we're rubbing our hands at those points, going, This is going to be the gate to add the hand. Oh, so that's yeah, quality it, stuff that in it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it gets changed all the time. But yeah, but the thing I was kind of saying was the, the story is of um of, of Billy, who's the Rangers fan, and Tim, who's a Celtic fan, they get they get locked up on the day of the big match for non-payment of fines. And uh, on the way out the door when they're getting arrested with the police, they've persuaded their wives to go and put money on the bookies on their team. <laughs> so if they, if their team wins, their wives will collect the winnings and pay their fines and they'll get out. <laughs> uh, when they arrive, when they arrive at the prison cell, um, they're greeted by Harry. So Harry's the jailer, the turnkey that locks them up. And what's happening in Harry's life is he's waiting on a phone call about his sick grandson. So his grandson's in for a big operation, and uh, and he's waiting on a phone call. So every time the phone goes in the in the kind of jails, Harry's on the phone. And what happens is the two guys persuade Harry, uh, the two boys persuade Harry to let them watch the the game through the hatch. So they're taking shots each. At watching the match, but as as the match is unfolding, they're also getting a wee insight into Harry's world and what's going on with the grandson, and you know it starts to have an impact on those two, and uh, and and through it they start to try and support Harry who's having a bit of a tough time. So he maybe comes in with a cup of coffee, and the boys are kind of coming together to raise his spirit. So it's a beautiful, beautiful story about humanity. And I always say to people, I mean, it, 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 set now you could easily make it an Israeli and a Palestine. You know, you could make it a sunny Shiite. You could make it, say, Liverpool, Everton. Um, it's two people that don't go on, and they've got to overcome those that, that bigotry and the sectarianism within it for the greater good for somebody else, for, for Harry and the cell. So it's a brilliant story. It could be Montague Capulet, you know, and make it in Shakespeare, it would yeah. work. So uh, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's great. Sounds great. Sounds it great. does. Yeah. It does, really does. Yeah. I'm going to ask you, are you looking for sponsors for the tour? Is that sponsorship available? Yeah, so what, what we've done, um, Terry, is... I've, I've I've got a few mates that are local businessmen and stuff, and they've they've been wanting to get a, a piece of the brand because up in Scotland, I mean, we're playing in Glasgow, and it's already sold out for November fifteen hundred. Wow. So a couple of my mates have said, "Can you know, can I sponsor something? Get 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 my business name on it?" And I've yeah. said, "Yeah, no bother." So people are people are sponsoring at different levels, but ultimately they are supporting the arts. This is a commercial venture, you know. Can I? I I'm I'm not getting any funding to do this show. It's just a yeah. labour I love. I love the story. I think it's important and it's worth touring. So what we've got the now is we've got the pop up banners that you'll see at places, you know, just a, a roller banner that pops up out the ground. Yeah. Um, and we're, we're offering that, a sponsor on that for £100. Now, what would happen is, if you guys would, were kind enough to sponsor it, we would send that banner down to the Olympia and everybody that goes into the Olympia for the rest of the year, you know, up until next year, because that's when we come to the Olympia, would see the banner with, with your, your business on it. Yeah. So we're doing that at venues all around the country. Uh, we've had a few people come in with some big sponsors, which are really helping. We're doing the Edinburgh Festival in August. So some of the big tour companies are interested in being part of that because obviously there's a big tourist uh, community that go to the Edinburgh Festival with the military tattoo and stuff. So yeah. they want to be on the, the Edinburgh ones. So we've got tour companies, we've got local businesses, we've got some of the kind of football supporters groups 
want to sponsor it as well, yeah. and they'll have a banner yeah. at our supporters group as well. So, <laughs> so yeah, and it, it starts with as little as a hundred pounds. Do you know what I mean because I like the idea that I mean even we Davy Jones, who's just we Davy Jones, can can put his name on it and he can support it. Do you know what I mean? So this right. banner sponsored by Davy Jones, yeah. who's a big Rangers fan, a big Celtic fan. You know, so that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah, and anyone can reach out for that, can't they? That's, that's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Sorry, yeah. Sorry, they get, they get to see their names. I mean, okay. they get to be they get to be part of it. They get to see their name, not quite up in lights, but on the banner. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Scott, going off on a tangent, I think you mentioned before, you've got over half a million followers on Twitter, which is mm. absolutely brilliant. Are you using any other social media platforms, or is it purely just Twitter? Um, the half well, a million. What, what kind of what kind of happened to uh, with social media? It was actually I think Stephen Walters was kind of chinning me to say you should get on to social media yeah. while we are doing this Outlander. There's a big following, and I was kind of going, I'm busy enough. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Got enough stuff going on. So I reluctantly went on, set up the account, and not, not knowing anything about how social media worked, um, people would message and say, oh, you wish me happy birthday, Scott? And I'd be like, oh, yeah, no worries, yeah, happy birthday. <laughs> Come in, and then someone say, you make a video for my, my nephew or something? Like, oh, yeah, no worries, make a video. And and unbeknown to me, because I was engaging, people started going, that's really cool that Scott does that, you know? And more and more people started kind of coming to my platform because I think at the time, a lot of the other cast members maybe were actually becoming big stars, and uh, and and they were behaving accordingly, like they don't they don't chat to the machines. <laughs> and uh, and I was I was I was I was from a, a theatre background, and I know how important an audience is. That you you want a your audience you, you don't have the theatre shows without an audience. Mm. So if somebody's took the time to message you and support you watching a film or a TV show or a theatre you're in, you know it's, it's nice to 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 thank them and you know kind of and that was it. It started to kind of really snowball and evolve. And uh, at one point, I had the most amount of Twitter followers of all the Outlander cast. Wow, and then I, then I think they got wind of it, and the next minute we started to see that Sam and Cat and everybody else was making videos for people and all that, yeah. and uh, everybody kind of joined in. So, uh, so, so yeah, but uh, over half a million, and it, yeah. it's been incredible. But you're asking other platforms. It got to the stage where I was going, you know, uh, it, it was people were saying, "I'm coming to Scotland. Did you meet us for a coffee?" You know, and I'd be like, "All right, I'll meet you for a coffee." It got so big, and I was like, "I, I don't have time to meet everybody for a coffee." So I started running an event called the Highlander Fling, and we had a big Kaylee. We'd do a big Kaylee. We did that for five years. Uh, we stopped it when the pandemic happened, uh, but we might we might kick it off again. And that was just an excuse for people to gather. People could come and uh, support support and, and get. We wouldn't we'd have a coffee. We'd have a wee drama and a dance. You know, yeah. wee whiskey. <laughs> a wee Kaylee, so so yeah, so so no, I'm, I am on other platforms, but I, I try I try not to get sucked into them as much, to be honest. Because you can do full time, really. Yeah, it's it's it's, 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 a, it's a huge following to try and like service it. And you know, sell people are, people that message you, they, they expect you to get back within ten minutes. I mean, like seeing you guys when I've got your when I've got your stuff, I have to take a screen grab of it because within within half an hour it'll be buried three hundred deep. And the messages. Wow. So I have to yeah, take a screen yeah. so that I remember who it is. I'm, I'm, what, what link I'm supposed to be clicking to come into the podcast, you know? Yeah. I would really yeah, appreciate you being there. I was surprised to hear from you so quick, to be honest. I was, yeah, I was I delighted. Didn't, I didn't yeah. think it would back from you. Well, that, that's, that's what I got. Well, well I can lucky. see it. Well, I remember. I'll answer it then because if if I don't, it, goes, it gets lost in the in the feed <laughs> of just literally hundreds and hundreds of messages. So moving on to, we talk about, how do you fancy doing a feature-length screenplay? Is anything like that taken away at the back of your mind if it came I, up? I, yeah, I mean, acting's a funny game is that you can go through famine and feast, um, and yeah. most actors will testify to that. I, I'm lucky enough. I do other things as well as acting, right? Like you say, I do the teaching, you know, I do producing. Uh, I work in the theatres as well. So I get to say no to things that I don't want to do. So I, I'm a big believer that, at the moment, right. if you go onto my website and you watch any of the footage on there, I'm really proud of everything I've been in. I'm really happy with it. Um, I know that that's not always the case for actors because if you're if you're if you're out of work for a while and a job comes in, even if you don't fancy it, it's very tempting to take it. You know. Yeah. Um, so I, I think if the right projects come up, you know, um, I'm, I'm well I'm well up for them. But the big one now is I want to get the book finished. Um, I'd like to continue the animation. Uh, I like audio books. Uh, and to me, this is like a visual book. This is something, you know, kind of um, that you get to watch the story as well. So you're not just listening to me reading the chapter. You're getting visual aids with the story yeah, as well. Yeah, so yeah, I'd, I'd like right. to continue that and finish that and maybe have one day you go to the cinema to watch my book. You know, I'm saying, if you want to come to the cinema and see my book and you get to watch <laughs> it on the screen. Um, and I'd like to kind of maybe make, um, if not a kind of movie of, of, of the life that's in the book, um, but maybe a stage play of it. So that would, that would be something I'd like to do. 
because there's certainly enough drama in it, you know. Um, the animation's so, uh, great like, for, for the first chapter. It's superb. It is. It well, really that, draws it you in. Yeah. yeah. That was um, that was Fraser Murdoch. I met Fraser on Outlander. Um, he does all the visual effects. So Fraser kind of makes uh, the green screen stuff. You know, he turns a oh, hundred men into a thousand men, and yeah. he makes uh, he makes people have one hand and makes a hand disappear and all that kind of stuff. So, <laughs> so yeah, Fra- Fraser did the animation uh, for us, and he's done a fantastic job. And um, we've got a kind of original score and stuff done for it. You know, so yeah. um, but it's a very expensive animation is so expensive and very time consuming. Oh. So um, so yeah, it's uh, something that'll be gradually you know picking away at as as we move forward. But it's it's exciting. Okay, okay, excellent. Yeah, I'm going to go off on a complete tangent now, Scott. But early on in your acting career, your Wikipedia page it mentions that while working as a student and on night shift at a supermarket, you founded the NLP company, and this was to create opportunities for student actors. But tell us about this. You sound extremely busy. So, uh, so yeah, what. Well, when I went to go to college, so I got to credit my now wife for that. She said to me, "Why don't you go to college?" And I thought, I wasn't, I wasn't particularly academic at school, do you know yeah. what I mean? So I was like, I don't know that I would do a, a well at college. And she came in with an acting course, you know, and said, "There's an acting course." And I said, "Because I'm singing the karaoke at the football night out, <laughs> doesn't mean I can go to an acting course." Okay, but, sorry, um, but while I remember, sorry to put in, you, you you did the acting course when you were at a nautical college. Is is that right, or is that a mistake? Yeah, somewhere? So- it's nothing to do with the navy. Oh, the, the the college was a big, as big navy college, so right. it's by the riverside. But ah. they did have a drama department in it, so yeah. it just just that there was a drama department within the within the building. Mm. So so I went there. Uh, when I arrived, I didn't even know what a monologue was. You know, because I had no, <laughs> no no understanding of what I was getting into. Um, so I managed to get through the audition process. They gave me an improvisation. Uh, I think I think I danced about. I think it gave me. Imagine you get into the course and I did a football celebration sliding on my knees around the course in the classroom. <laughs> so they let me in. I don't know um, if they just took pity on me. But uh, but yeah, I did, I did three years there. And uh, and I was I was working the night shift. And when I went to my mum to say, look, I'm going to go back to education, to college, uh, my mum's reaction, bear in mind the background, I've kind of painted there as we, we came from a single parent family. Mm. You know, we were, I, I used to think we were working class. Looking back, we were poor. Mm. You know, kind of... Um, and uh, and my mum said to me, you can't go to college because I need your rent money. Yeah. I need the money you pay in with the rent. And that's why there's an aspect of creativity came to me is that I started working the night shift in the supermarkets at night and I would finish at eight in the morning and I'd jump onto my wee scooter, my wee moped I had, and I'd go to college during the day. And I still had my uniform on when I was arriving at class. Yeah. And I'd do three, four hours maybe, and then I'd go home, go to my bed, get up, go to my football training, back to night shift in the morning, away back to college again. And, uh, and I did that for three years. And as I've said to you at the start, I, I seen kids graduating and not getting any work. And I thought, I'm next. And some of these kids, you know, they could act, they could dance, they could sing. They'd been doing it for many, many years. And I was kind of coming in as a mature student going, I don't know if I'm going to get a job, if these kids can't get a job. And uh, and I went to Business Gateway and I set up a theatre company. It's called No Limit People. And the idea was we didn't have any resources. We didn't have a van. We didn't have anything. But, you know, kind of we had the belief that we could do it. So there was no limits on what we could achieve if we believed it. And uh, we started taking the shows we did as part of the college course out on the road at the weekends. So we would take them out and we'd do a play as part of the course. So all the all the students were rehearsing free because we're part of the course. Mm. The set and the costumes were paid for by the course. And I would just put it on at the weekend at the theatre and sell some tickets and I'd start to learn about the industry. And, uh, and then, as I say, when I graduated, I went to a local library to find a play that I wanted to put on and... There was singing I'm Not Billy's of them sitting on the shelf, like like a scene for a movie. I picked it up and went, this is brilliant. I could tell this story. Why is it not been on all over the UK? And then I set about trying to make that happen. Um, and we did it for five years very, very successfully until, as I said, I got the big business lesson. Brilliant. And now here we are um, on the 20-year anniversary and we're, we're, we've made it to London. It took us a decade longer or later than we probably hoped. Yeah, we're, yeah, now. We're, 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 we're going to London with a show and, and we're playing some of the biggest venues in Scotland, so it's exciting. Excellent. But that was, that was No Limit People was the idea of the theatre company. Hmm. Okay. Was the idea. Yeah. Sounds like you've worked really hard throughout yes. your life to get yeah. where you are. You know, it really does. I can, yeah, it's I can all paid see off. that. Yeah. But see, that's, Steve, that's, that's a big thing. Of I, I give that credit to my mum. You know, um, yeah. grow, grown up, um, you know, kind of, there wasn't a dad around, so my mum worked multiple jobs. She was a cleaner in the morning before we got out for school. She did the lunches in the local bar, and she would be, be out at night time when we come home from sc- uh, school. She's cleaning the, the shopping centre, 
you know, kind of. So I seen her doing multiple jobs, and that was probably when she said, "I need, I need the money." I need that money. I was like, right, well, I'm going to need to find a way of making this work. And that was where I started to realise there's 24 hours in a day. I need to sleep less. <laughs> that's, that's what I started to do. I went to the night shift and I had the day shift and I would grab any sleep whenever I could, you know. I'd sleep in the classroom before the class started some days, you know. Kind of. wow. So, uh, so yeah, and uh, and and that's that's a work ethic I'm very proud of. And that's the sort of stories that I'd be happy to share in the book and maybe inspire the next generation that it is the easy, that is very difficult. But um, if you work hard, you can achieve, you know, you can achieve certain things. I don't know if you can achieve everything you want to do, but you can certainly achieve certain things, you know. Yeah, finally from me, what advice would you give to someone who has aspirations of becoming an actor? What's what 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 the, do they do? The best advice I would say is infinite patience. Infinite patience produces immediate results. <laughs> so if you're <laughs> infinitely patient, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you will have immediate results. And it, it is a wee bit of being around, being around long enough. Now, any of you guys obviously like your football. Do you know what I mean? Like some sometimes you're in the in the team and sometimes you're no acting kind of a wee, wee, wee bit like that. You've got to be, you know, the chat would be in the right place at the right time. Mm. Well, well, you've got to be in the right place first if you're ever going to be at the right time. So you've kind of got to find a way of surviving. And uh, I think it was uh, Harrison Ford had a famous quote, and he said, "You've got to outlast the people you came in on, come in on the bus with." Mm. You know, yeah. everybody's coming down to London or wherever they're going to give this a go. And actually, as you get older, you've probably got more chances as you get older. Because when you're in your 20s, there's there's 20 year old actors that are a dime a dozen. Mm. They're coming out of college every year. Uh, try and find 40 and 50 year old actors that are, are good because most of them are like, right, they maybe had another half that's saying, right, you need to get a proper job or you need to, we need to pay these yeah, bills, yeah. you need a mortgage, <laughs> you don't have yeah. a family, you know. So, um, mm. so yeah, so. Um, so that that probably be the advice, and and just have other things like, because I, I think it's 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 like if you went into any workplace, you 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 got to get on with people, hmm. and I think having a few other things that you do and a bit of interest yourself, you know, kind of of other, you know, you're not just chatting about the theater, chatting about movies, chatting about you want to be in the theater and want to be in movies all the time. Having other things is is quite good, you know. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Excellent advice. Yeah. Good advice, yeah. It is. Mm -hmm. Scott, as Steve mentioned, the uh, time's caught up with us, but it's been an absolute delight. I, I, if you were available, I'd chat to you all day and night, to be honest. <laughs> I've really enjoyed this. And it's, it's, yeah, it's actually great. flown by. Yeah. But for now, Scott, let's, um, let's keep in touch and cheers. Thank you. Yeah, no worries, James. Yeah, well, thank you very much for your time. And I, I hope to catch up with you for a wee pint in, uh, in Liverpool when we come oh, yeah. down. Uh, that'd be great, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mark the day. Yeah, definitely. Get, get a wee, wee night out with the guys. Um, yeah, brilliant. Uh, and uh, yeah, so thank you very much for inviting me on. It's been a, a pleasure. I've enjoyed my time. And uh, thanks for listening. It's always nice to share, share a story and to meet new people. So thank you very much. Oh, Cheers. thank you. It's been Excellent. brilliant. Love that story, yeah. I do. Yeah. Thanks, Scott. Okay. Take care, gents. All right. Cheers. Bye now. Take care. Bye-bye.